Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 19 of my Android development for beginners tutorial. Today, I'm going to answer a ton of different questions that I have been getting. I'm going to focus in on programming logic and more specifically how to incrementally put together an App Inventor app and pretty much any type of application uh, for Android or anything you can think of. But more specifically, we're going to cover this with App Inventor. Also, I'm going to show you how to make a contacts application. And why that's important is a question I get all the time is how to create lists of lists. More specifically, lists of contacts that have lists of information inside of them. But I'm going to take it another step and I'm going to store these on a tiny web DB and also access and change them on multiple different screens. So hopefully this is going to answer a lot of your questions and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, something I've been getting a question about a lot is why don't I draw out an App Inventor app using a sequence diagram? Well, this right here is a sequence diagram just for anybody that doesn't know. And no, I'm not going to do that, mainly because, in my opinion, it would complicate the process. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. What I will do, however, is create a use case diagram or a use case description. So let's take a look at what one of those would look like. Okay, so this is basically it. It's pretty simple, but if you do this, it's going to make developing applications very easy. And all you're basically going to do is list out exactly what you want your app application to do. And the more detailed you are, the easier it is going to be for you to make an application. So right here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a use case description. And on top of that, we're going to model out exactly how we're going to update a list picker based off of names or contact names being entered. So basically what we're going to do, why don't we jump over and look at what the app's going to look like. Okay, so this is the application interface that we're going to be working with. And let's think about what we need to do. Basically, what's going to happen, this is a list picker. Whenever they click on this, it's going to list all your friends, okay? And I'm keeping this simple just so that it is extremely easy to understand. Basically, what we need to model out in our use case description is how they're going to enter a name and hit add contact, and then it's going to be put in our friends list picker. And that's it. We want to start off slow and increment our way up to create our application and test, test, test all along to make sure that each little part works. So now let's jump back over into the description, take a look and think about that. Okay, so basically what we need to do is just list out exactly what we want to happen. All right, so basically when the user clicks add contact, we want to check to make sure that we have a contact to be added. Basically, do we have a contact's name inside of the text box? Okay, very important. If so, we want to create a list that will contain the contact's information. Then we want to add the contact list of data to our master list. We're going to have a master list, and then we're also going to have a list picker. So we want to update our list picker. Then when the list picker is updated, what do we want to do? We want to first create an empty string that's going to contain the picker elements because how we add elements to a list picker is we create a string that's just a list of items separated by commas. We're then going to make sure that the master list has contacts in it, and then we're going to say that we want to go through the master list, and for each contact we want to put it in the string, which is going to represent our element list. That is exactly what we want to do. This page right here, and this one right here. That is our description of what we want our application to do. So let's go back over into App Inventor and let's implement that. And it may be useful if you have that list of things in front of you because we're going to jump into the block section and we're going to start modeling everything. Okay, so what I had in my use case description is basically I'm going to need a couple of variables. I am going to need a contact list and it is going to be my master list. So we're going to go over into lists, and we're just going to say, hey, create an empty list. Okay, we're going to initialize or give it a value. That is what we're doing there. Then on top of that, we're going to want individual contacts. So let's duplicate this. And these individual contacts are going to be added to this list. So I'm just going to call this div contact. And there we go. Now what do we need to do? Well, from our description, we said that whenever they click on the button, add contact button, this guy right here, 
we're going to get this and you can kind of see how this looks like a sequence diagram that's why I don't make sequence diagrams for these then what I wanted to do is make sure that I actually have a contact name in the text box which is right here so I'm going to say that I want to go and get the text from that text box so come in here get that text and drag it out of here and let's just drop it right here and what I said I wanted to specifically do is make sure it's not empty so to do that I'm gonna go into logic and get not drop that there I'm also gonna go into control if remember I'm going to do different things based off of different conditions not and then I'm gonna check that the text area is not empty so not empty there we go and there we go all right so if that check works we are going to do certain things now the certain things we're going to do is first off we're going to add the name to the individual contact so I'm gonna get this guy right here and because it's a list I have to add it using list tools so add items to list there we go drop that right there get this is the list so I'm going to add the name to this guy right here and if I had addresses and cities and streets and all that stuff I would just add multiple things to this individual list okay then I'm gonna add these individual lists into my contact list which is gonna contain every single one of my contacts so basically what I want to do now is I want to duplicate this drop it right here and this time the individual list is going to go there and the contact list is going to go here so that is how I'm going to add lists of lists let's just get rid of this and then at the end I want to make sure that this individual that I no longer need it's stored in the list is deleted it was just a temporary thing that I was going to be working with so I'm just going to go set individual and I'm going to make it empty again okay so duplicate that drop that right there then what I want to do is update my list picker because that is what I showed in the description so let's go take a look at that so here we are update list picker what are we gonna do well we're gonna go in here and we're gonna create an empty little container that's going to contain all of the elements that are gonna go in the list picker then I'm gonna make sure that the master list has contacts in it then I'm gonna add each contacts name to the list picker element list I just want the names I don't want anything else and then I want to add the element list back to the list picker so let's go and model that out and to do that I'm gonna go create a procedure and I'm gonna give this a name of update list picker and then I'm gonna do exactly what I said I was gonna do I'm going to create a variable and this is going to be the string that is going to be used to create all the elements in my list picker string for list picker and I said previously that it wasn't going to have any value so I'll put that right there let's move this down a little bit then I'm gonna go into my list picker elements from string this guy right here I'm gonna set this to nothing there we go and this is going to be the little guy that we're going to be adding to so that we can then add everything to the list picker I'm gonna get this guy right here we're going to verify because update list picker is going to be called numerous different times we're going to verify that that actually has nothing in it and then we're going to need another one of these strings it's going to be a temporary string let's duplicate this it's going to be a temporary holding cell for each of the items that we want to add so I'm going to give it a name of temp string and come down here for set and let's also give that a nothing value there we go okay then we said we want to verify that our contact list this guy right here isn't empty so to do that we're going to drag this down here and we're going to go and get an if statement if drop that right there and to check that it isn't empty we're going to need a not just like we had right there logic not if not we want to check if a list isn't empty we're gonna to have to go into the lists area list empty right there and then we're gonna put this contact list inside of here now what we're gonna do if we get to the then part we know that this isn't empty and we can add these things to our list picker so we're gonna to have to cycle through all of the different list items and I'm gonna use a for each block for this and specifically what I'm gonna be getting information from is this guy right here then I'm gonna get and set the temporary string and remember item is going to actually hold the contact because this is lists inside of lists or contacts inside of contact list and then information on the contacts inside of there as well so what we're gonna need to do is use this guy right here but we're gonna have to get the first element inside of it which is going to be the name so that means we're gonna have to come up here and get a join drop that right there 
And then if we want to get lists inside of lists, we're going to have to go inside of the list area and go select list item. And this is going to be the actual contact. And if we want the name, we're going to get the first item inside of it. That is where the name is going to be located. And then after that, we're going to put a comma to separate it. And that's going to allow us to create our string of elements that is going to create the list picker. Now what we're going to do is get our string for the list picker here, drop it right here. We know it starts off with nothing inside of it, which is good. And now what we want to do is add this new temporary element or name that we just got. Let's just duplicate this, drop that there. I'm going to come in here and delete this. And then we're going to go and get this, drop that there. And then we're going to get the temporary string, which is going to contain the name that we need. And that's going to create that list. Then after we go through every single item in our contact list, what we need to do is store everything in the list picker. So go over to the list picker, set the list picker based off of elements from string, which we just created. Make sure we put it outside of the for each block. And then this guy right here is going to contain our list of elements. And that's it. Basically what we did was we took that description we had. Well, it's not quite it. I need to go into procedures and call update list picker. Now that's it. So that's how we went and we created everything based off of that little description of what we needed to do. Okay, so that's the translation. We can quickly go over and take a look at what that app looks like right now on our device. Okay, so here's our application. Real simple. We're going to be able to come in here and just enter in a name. And by keeping everything nice and simple and incrementally building this, it's going to be very easy. We're going to hit add contact. And then whenever we click on friends, we're going to see Paul is there. Okay, so now that we know that works, what we want to do now is we want to add these lists of lists of contacts to a database. So let's look at another use case that's going to explain exactly how we're going to do that. Okay, so basically what we're going to need to do here to make this store on the database is we need to first catch any web service errors that are going to occur. Then we're going to need to get data from the web service whenever the app loads so that all that information can then be stored inside of our list picker as well as our master list. We're going to, of course, need to verify that proper tags are designated so that we get the proper data. And if the data should be updated, we need to check that it is a list and then store it in our WebDB. And that would occur anytime new names are added. So let's jump back over into App Inventor and implement all that. Okay, so we're going to implement everything in the exact order in which we listed everything out that we needed to do. And we have a tiny WebDB here, so just click on that. Very first thing we listed is we want to handle any errors that occur. So just drag this guy out, drop him right there. And basically how we're going to handle that is with a notifier. So get a notifier, and I want to put a little bit of information, so I'm going to get the show message dialog, drop that there. And then specifically what I want to do here is for the message, I'm just going to get the message that's sent that gives us information on the error. And then I'm going to call this, I don't know, error downloading. There we go. Drag that right there. And then the button text is just going to be OK. All right, so we got rid of one of the things we needed to get rid of. Now what we need to do is initialize the screen and get all the information from the web when everything loads up. And to do that, we're going to go into screen and initialize and drag that and drop it right there. Whenever we want to get all of our data from the web, I'm going to create a procedure that just does that. Drag this guy out of here. And we should also get ourselves some more room. Could run it out. Drop that right there. Get data from web. And to get the data from the web, we're going to need to go to TinyDB. Get value. And I need to just give it a keyword phrase that I can find it with. Now what I'm going to do is type in NTT contacts. And you might think to yourself, well, why doesn't he just type in contacts? Well, chances are, since this is going to be a shared database on the internet, there is a very good chance that somebody else might be storing a tag named contacts. So I'm going to put NTT for new think tank on there to cut down on the chances that somebody goes in there and gets my data or messes my data up. So that's why I called it that. I have to always be thinking about potential problems. So get data from web. We're going to do that whenever this is initialized. So there we go. And then on top of that, I want to update my list picker because the data could have changed. So I'll also go into procedures, update list picker. And there we go. Now we have all of that set up. Next thing we're going to need to do here is actually get the value because here we're saying we want to go get it but to actually retrieve it and make sure it's the right information we need to go into tiny webdb and get got value 
this is the guy that's going to be called after the data is actually retrieved. And if you can remember from our list of things we wanted to do, very first thing we want to do is verify that this is actually a list. So we're going to go up here to control, if, then, drag this down here, drop it right there. We're going to say, hey, is this an actual list? List, there we go. Zoom out here, is a list thing, there we go. And value, this is the actual data, this is the tag for this guy right here. So we're going to go and get the value, verify that it actually is a list. Then we want to verify that it is actually our content. We want to make sure the tag is NTNT contacts. So come up here, get another if then, drag it right there. And we want to compare the text, compare text, drop that there. We want to verify that it's equal. Duplicate that and then get the actual tag. And there we go. And those should match up. Now if they do match up, then we know that we have our data. So what we want to do is update our master list of contacts, this guy up here. So we want to get this, get our set, drag it down here. You're going to see it in a second when I zoom in. There we are. And then I want to actually get the value from it. I can just come up here, get, and store my list of contacts inside of the master list. And then, of course, I want to call for the list picker to be updated. So, update list picker. And there we go. Now we're storing this information on the database. Another thing we want to do, however, is send the data to the database. So I'm going to create another procedure, and that's if a new name is created. And let's drop this here. And let's just call this guy send data to db. Very first thing we want to do though is we want to make sure that our contact list that we want to send to the database isn't empty. So I'll go into control, if then, drag that, drop it right there, and let's go and get our contact list, our master list, there it is, and get, drag that down there, and give ourselves more room. And we want to verify that the list isn't empty, but we want to check not, so then we're going to have to get the not. Drop that there, and then let's go into lists, and let's get the empty part. Is list empty? Not. Drag that up there, and here is our master list. Now that we've verified that our list isn't empty, we can properly send all that information. We're going to go and get a store value. Drop that there. And specifically what we're going to store is NTT contacts. Duplicate that. That's going to be the tag. And the actual data we're going to store is going to be our contact list. Now the only thing we need to do now is go way up here to the add contact button area and whenever a new contact has been added we want to call the procedure to send the data to the database. And there we go. So not only did we create lists of lists and store name data, like I said, that this can actually be your homework. Go in there and also store the city, streets, state or territory, any other types of inf information. Store that in there and that would be fabulous homework. I'm gonna show you how to do it though, but based off of what I just showed you, you should be able to figure it out on your own. But aside from that, we also covered how to store all this information on the database. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to update your contact information on a different screen. And of course, share all this wonderful information. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.